Coming up on Theater Talk. Brightening up the season will be Musto the Musical. I have the producer in place. I don't know his name and he has a hack cough. But it's all set to go. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm producer Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. So here we are, Michael, another season. Yes, begins. how many years have we been uh, doing Theater Talk now? What well, you and I have been on television together for 20 years. It's but not all of us look that way, right? No, I look better. Yeah. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> um, yes, we are at another season on Broadway. Um, it's a little kind of a dud season. I'm concerned that there isn't all that much excitement right now, uh, more in the spring than in the fall. But let's uh, go through and plug away at some of these loser shows coming up in the fall. We have uh, brought together our regular panel of experts, Michael Musto from The Village Voice. Welcome, welcome back to Theater Talk, Michael. Brightening up the season will be Musto the Musical. I have the producer in place. I don't know his name and he has a hack cough, but it's all set to go. <laughs> Musto the Musical. We'll get to that in a moment, folks. <clears throat> uh, we're also joined by Jesse Green of New York Magazine. Jesse, are you going to be jumping on this unfolding Rebecca scandal anytime soon That's been that's been in the papers the last three weeks? What papers have it, has it been, Michael? <laughs> I, I haven't noticed anything Subpoena about papers. it. papers. <laughs> yes. Legal papers. I'll leave that to the experts. Mm. And in place of our f little friend Patrick Pacheco, who is standing in line to get Barbara Streisand tickets uh, <laughs> today, we are joined by Adam Feldman of Time Out Magazine. Welcome, Adam. Glad to be here. Good to be All right, gentlemen, before I get into it, I do have to ask Jesse something. I'll put on my reading glasses here. I oh, this is terrible. He's putting on new glasses in oh. order to ask me something? No. Well, I happen to be going through my old friend Arthur Lawrence's new book. Oh, dear. The oh. rest of the story. And I, last night I was reading it, and I came across this section, which I thought, this is interesting. I wanted to get your take on it, Jesse. Have you, have you read this book yet? No, I have not. Oh, this is really good. All right. <clears throat> He's talking about um, a New York Magazine piece that you wrote about Arthur uh, when he was directing West Side Story. I wrote no such piece. <laughs> he said... <laughs> He said, uh, this was the most severe whacking i would ever gotten. I doubt that. The now, whacking. I, have per I know that's not true. The whacking. What about, <laughs> what about Montgomery Cliff? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is already not believable. <laughs> <laughs> the whacking was done by New York Magazine, a magazine that blended gossip with journalism. The whacker was Jesse Green, you, who had interviewed me for a piece he was writing for the Times on Patti Lapone. Pleasant, gay. You're okay? What? Yeah. <laughs> this is just riddled with errors. Pleasant? <laughs> Pleasant, gay. Jesse had a receding hairline, a partner, and a little adopted boy. A combination. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> a combination certain to inspire trust. <laughs> there was no sign of a dog beneath his skin. When I opened my door and welcomed him into my house. This is a great preview of the new season. For his article <laughs> on West Side Story. One visit wasn't enough. He needed just a little more information. He wanted to report everything. I wanted to tell him about the production. Could he please come back for another interview? Then he wanted to come back just once more. What are you, Columbo? Just once more he went back. And on one of, the, and on one of those positively final farewell appearances, Jesse, the dog, asked if I had changed my name. I said I had. Jesse said he was just checking. He wasn't going to waste any space on that. The moment registered only after he'd sat on me like a souped-up Rottweiler. <laughs> I, re I don't read New York. Someone, I can't remember who, said I'd better. It probably would have been better if I hadn't, but I did. A few sentences in, I got the tenor of the piece. Jesse hacked me to bloody pieces with glee and then sh on me for good measure, without a context. No, that was quotes. Montgomery Cliff too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a response to this attack from uh, one of the great men of the theater, Arthur Lawrence? I guess I would just say that I never really had the genius that Arthur does for, for uh, purveying falsehoods as truth. So I had to write <laughs> the truth, and that's what I did. I'm terribly, terribly sorry it hurt him. But receding hairline. I know. <laughs> Pleasant? <laughs> I just can't Gay. get over it. <laughs> I've been reading this book too, and there's an even bigger fascinating section on Michael Riedel. Really? Which I won't that, bore our, I won't yet. bore our readers with any more reading except to put my favorite line. He said, 
Michael Riedel's epitaph should be, here lies. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give him credit. That's a good you line. Do. He's funny. He had a way he with a line. A whack at, he takes a whack at the two of us. And there. he's back from the grave to settle scores. <laughs> I think this may be the last time. Though. I know. Don't you feel <clears throat> with Arthur Lawrence, you know, you're walking around all of a sudden, the hand comes up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like Harry. All right. Anyway, it's a fabulous book, and I urge you to read it. Um, and Jesse and I will be signing it at Barnes & Noble. <laughs> <laughs> in the coming. All right, gentlemen, let's get to uh, far less interesting things, which would be the... Uh, Dud season shaping up here. Uh, Michael, our, we've got a bunch of uh, musicals. The one I think could be the standout, breakout, unexpected hit is um, the Kathy Lee Gifford show, Scandalous, <laughs> The Life and Trials of Amy Semple McPherson. Do you have a, any sense about uh, uh, what Kathy Lee's up to? Well, I find it interesting that Sondheim can't get a musical done on Broadway, a new one anyway, but Kathy Lee Gifford can't. But you know what? She's all right. She's good people. And she's, uh, what am I saying? And she's promoting the heck out of it on the Today Show. So there's already a line of 12 people. Oh. And you could call it a female leap of faith if you really want to promote it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a little inside uh, gossip on that, though. There was a, she was on the Today Show, and she said, oh, uh, the box office is opening for my show today. Let's check in there and see what's going on. And they went, and there was a line out. She went, oh, there's a line. There's a line. If you look closely, that line. They were all uh, members of the uh, advertising <laughs> advertising <laughs> firm working on the show. I mean, what do you make of this? Is this just one of these Chaplin things which opened and is going to die? And oh, gosh, I don't know. I mean, I may be reviewing it, so I don't want to prejudge what it's going to be. But uh, what I will say is it's nice to see Carolee Carmelo in a lead role on Broadway. She's one of the best actresses on Broadway, and she never gets to do a lead anymore. She's been replacing leads for a long time. But to originate a big, juicy part, even in what may not be a very exciting musical. I have seen a Kathy Lee Gifford musical already because she wrote a children's musical a few years ago. Oh, right. Was it any good? Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> it was well-intentioned. And uh, and this one looks, you know, I'm praying for Equally it. Equally well-intentioned? Equally well-intentioned. Amy Semple McPherson is a fascinating topic. The first female big charismatic leader and then she got brought down by a sex scandal. Yeah. So it's a great story. And Kathy Lee Gifford comes from an evangelical background even though her and real... Was, and was engulfed in a sex scandal that her husband, yes. Frank Gifford, uh, yes. was running around with an airline. And before that, she was dating Frank before Frank was officially divorced, although she's very sketchy about that in her autobiography. I can't believe I said that. That's the name of her autobiography. Oh. <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, I can't believe you said let me, that, uh, and that no. isn't the name let me, of let, let me ask the Rothschild. So she knows where, she knows where yeah. she's <laughs> have you been? Have, has New York Magazine sicked you on Kathy Lee yet? Are you going to do a hit piece I, on I'm her? I'm actually you surprised that they haven't. I, I think uh, you could, do, you could really be, do a tear, tear apart perfect. limb from limb piece. No, I'm, I, I haven't been uh, sent on many big, juicy bloody dog theater stories recently. <laughs> Speaking of that, there is something we need to touch on. This unfolding scandal, Michael, of Rebecca the musical. Now, Rebecca was coming in from Stuttgart, I think, and it's based on the Daphne du Maurier gothic novel. Uh, but it turned out that um, an investor died, so the money wasn't there. But now it appears that this investor never existed and that there's a massive fraud involved in this show. What's your sense of what's going on here? When the story first broke, I said to my friends, how do we know this guy existed? And they said, well, the guy, the producer, went to London to get his estate. It's like, well, how do we know he went to London? Um, you can't go by what he says. And even if he did get one email, which he claims was the extent of his relationship with this person, one email where they didn't even say, hi, how are you? It was just like, I'll give you $450. $4.5 million. Yeah. Thank you. This, we would say this This. this it, phantom investor's name was Paul Abrams, and he was supposed to come to the table with $4.5 million. Suddenly he dies of malaria. Malaria. From a trip to Africa. <laughs> and as you know, anyone who dies of malaria, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in the industrial world has to be r reported to the health organization. There is no... There, nobody died of malaria in London in August. Not a Paul Abrams, no one else died of malaria. So this guy and the lawyer for the legitimate producers has now come forward and said, this guy did not exist. But if he was sick with malaria, he was in delirium tremens when he said, I'll give 4.5 million to Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Because it was such a hit in Helsinki. Yeah, the well, I, for, I was away when I first heard that he died. I said, oh, he must have got around to reading the script <laughs> to polish yeah. off anyway. But no such person could exist. I mean, it's a terrible idea. And it was doomed. I'm sorry. Now that it's not coming in, I can say. Boy, the stink of failure around this show from the beginning when it was announced. The efforts over the years to bring it here. They could and never I, get the money together. No. And I know it was successful in Austria, that theater, but I mean, the only other thing that's come from that theater to Broadway was Dance of the Vampires. <laughs> <laughs> and we know how that ended. I wonder if it's just an elaborate publicity scheme 
so that when it when it finally <laughs> opens, opens, no, no. open, people will be interested to see what it's the more dead like a Ponzi producer. scheme. You're <laughs> at the school of people who said that Obama threw the first debates because he didn't want to raise over expectation. But from my, from my yeah, reporting, my that. reporting on the story, I can tell you it's it's not over with yet. There are a lot of other things that are going to be. Uh, well, did but but it's down? not going to end with the show coming in. No, no the show is the show right. is dead. But you tracked down the guy the who was, was the middleman between the producer here, Ben Sprecher. Who says he never met the man who? Well, yes, I I got the name of this fellow named Mark C. Houghton, who allegedly we don't know yet. He hasn't been accused of anything except by Ben Sprecher's lawyer that he was the conduit to these imaginary investors. It is true when you research this fellow Mark C. Houghton, he's been involved in a number of fraud cases over the years and is in bankruptcy court. And in fact, you can make a bid for four of his boats uh, on uh, on an auction website at this point. It really uh, does seem like the producers. It really does. It really does. I mean, no one can quite get to the bottom, the motivation of it yet, but the FBI's but the producer, involved. The producers was about over-investing in a show, and they really did have the money from all those old ladies. I watched that show. <laughs> <laughs> this is about some phantom money that might be out there. I mean, the message is you have to have it in hand, not only a check, but make sure it clears before you announce to the world you have an actual show and before you start trying to pay people to rehearse. Exactly. Well, and a lot of actors and, and others are, are out, out of work. work and have been... And turned the down place other jobs and for it whatnot. for a while. Uh, yeah. It's a terrible. Not thing. to mention Michael Blakemore, the director. Uh, and by the way, uh, this is the most uh, the, the, the biggest scandal I've seen in a long time on Broadway. But there are other shows that are scrapping around for money. A Christmas Story, yet another one of these holiday musicals is coming in. I mean, they're sort of going down the path of having to take out <coughs> loans at high interest rates to try to get their mm -hmm. capitalization going. So I think it's beginning to tell you underneath all this. The, the, for a while, I thought Broadway was immune to the troubles of the economy, but I think Broadway is, going to, is being hit by it now. It's a really shockingly bad season, not just in terms of potential quality, as you alluded to earlier, but just financially, it's looking desperate. There's still five theaters open for the fall, which was, has not been the case in a while. Yep. Uh, and, and the only really, I mean, there's a couple interesting revival musicals, possibly, but Really, the interesting action in musicals is all off-Broadway this fall. For example, what do you think? Uh, for example, uh, at, at the Public Theater, they have a short run of Fun Home, which is a, a wonderful work uh, based on the graphic novel uh, directed by Sam Gold. Janine Tesori wrote the music. They have Giant, Michael Lacuse's new show. I mean, it, it seems like the only place where they can actually pull the money together is where they're not spending so Excuse much Excuse me, we have Annie. <laughs> we have Annie on Broadway. <laughs> we got Annie. <laughs> Well, I said there's a, a one revival. That <laughs> well, and, and, like the Rude, and the mystery of Edwin Rude. And the mystery of Edwin Rude. Rude. But, which, <laughs> but you could be in with your your which I was in, in and college. Your, and your I mean, you did not know that, there. but I actually was. I played Jasper. I'm sure you did. Rude. I was oh. Princess Puffer. <laughs> <laughs> and I attacked the authors like a mad dog. <laughs> <laughs> souped up. <laughs> Don't feed up souped up. People walk, love Edwin Rude because one thing that gets people buying tickets now is interaction. Yeah, yeah, it's a reality show, and you get to guess who the villain is. Probably somebody with malaria. Well, no, it doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> well, I think the way Edwin Drood works is that you, the audience votes for yeah. who done it, yeah. and there are different endings depending on how the vote goes each each night. I've got to say, I, I I'm very I happy that Drood is coming back. It's a delightful score, and it's incredibly fun to be in as a performer. <laughs> uh, and I think that, but it also has once this, an actor, always I an know, actor. I can't help it, but it, it, it has this contingency built into it, so that uh, every night there are actually three different aspects of the ending that the audience chooses. And so it will be a little different every night and the actors are always sort of on their toes because of that. It keeps everything very lively. Who's playing, you know, I, I, I didn't say the original production, but I remember seeing it on the 1986 Tony Awards and there was a great old actor who played the Master of Ceremony. George, George Rose. Rose, wonderful actor. Who's playing the George Rose part in this? Cheetah Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Abrams. <laughs> Do we know who's playing the George Rose part? Oh gosh. I mean, I <laughs> looked at the press release. I want to uh, say Philip Bosco because he always plays those roles, but I don't. Our crack know. research team in, in the booth. <laughs> we <laughs> they that right that yeah, I'm drawing. Uh, but going back to, I, I do want to put in a good word though for Annie. It's the first musical I ever saw when I was a kid. Uh, very, very little. And the first little. one you were in. The first one I was in. You were an excellent Molly. I, I, I was. I was <laughs> believe it. Miss Hannigan. Um, <laughs> I think actually, Annie, even though it's seen, Michael, as a kid's show, it's a very skillfully put together old fashioned Broadway musicals by guys like Charlie Strauss and Tom Meehan, who were, and, and Martin Sharnan, who, and Mike Nichols, 
who was very influential in putting it together. You know, these guys are not slouches. It's it's more than just a, a dopey family show that we're getting all the time these it's, days. It's a wonderful show, and it uplifted New York in the 70s, and it will do so again, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's good to come around at a time that's devastated and depressed, because that little Moppet just could cheer the daylights out of you. <laughs> well, you know, and I love her. And, you know, I know everyone's saying, well, is there room for Annie and Matilda, which is going to come around later, which is another kitty slash adult show. The people that go to see those shows go to see two shows a year. So they're fine. They'll go to both. Right. And both shows are dependent on a cute little Moppet who's abused by a horrible adult. So yeah. the kids love it. Right. But then there are some nice adults that step in and save things. So the adults like it. Yeah. I'm surprised that you like Annie. It's really, if, if you break it down to its bare essentials, it's a leftist track. Yeah, I know. I ignore that section. I ignore that part of it. New Deal propaganda. Because I would have voted for Hoover, frankly. And I, I plug my ears in that Hooverville number, which I just... Anything that sucks. All you like anything that sucks. But it looks like a real high-quality revival. I mean, they've cast it beautifully and not in... Not in cheesy, expected ways. Right, right, and, right. Because uh, there was a cheesy revival of it several years ago in yeah. Bill Carter, which was which was not good, and the show did not did not hold up then. God rest her soul. But Katie Finneran will be wonderful, though. Oh, I'm so excited. As Miss Hannigan, yeah, she will. Katie Finneran, she's one of my very favorites. And and when they announced her, she hadn't been on the radar, you know, in terms of the star names that were being tossed around for it. And so when they actually announced her and they decided to go with the best person yeah. for the part, right. what a happy surprise. I'm very excited for Annie. I love that. Now, in terms of the plays, uh, <coughs> looking fairly thin here. Um, well, but better than the musicals. Yeah, but again, more re revivals of Golden Boy, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Do we need another Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross? Glenn Close and Diana Ross on Broadway. <laughs> uh, I don't need this. No, I don't. I'm sorry. Um, you know what? When, when they we know how it ends. I mean, you know, the, the trick ending is no. no but it is trick. Al Pacino. I mean, there is a financial reason, at least, to be doing. And it. it's a wonderful play. Al Pacino is the highest-paid yeah. actor on Broadway this season. He gets something Ever. like 130. But we just had a revival with Liev Schreiber and Alan Alda, which was tr very, very good. Yes. But you know what, when they first announced The Heiress with Jessica Chastain, I thought, well, we just had The Heiress. And then I looked it up, it was 16 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So even though that was an incredible seminal production with Cherry Jones, yeah, 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 uh, Jessica Chastain is a terrific actress. She was in every movie that was made last year. But Jessica Chastain <laughs> is weird casting for yes, that part. I mean, me. she's supposed to be very plain. The whole plot revolves well, around her plain. Well, it's called she's acting. A, she's supposed to believe that she's plain. I mean, the father has so uh, held her down that, that she thinks she's what he says she is. See, it's, this is like you I, and me, Michael. <laughs> yes. But know. but also we have a revival of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf yes. just seven years after, after the last. We had the very and Cat in the Hot Tin Roof, but what, two years the, after the, the, the last. The Virginia Woolf is a very interesting production. I saw it in Chicago, and the, it has a completely different balance of power between uh, George and Mark. Well, in this Tracy. one, George is the one who's, who's, who's Yeah, in Tracy control. Letts and uh, um, Amy, Amy Morton. Amy Morton. And it's, it's, so it's very different, and it's like seeing a different Hamlet. In a way, though, Broadway feels like it's becoming the Metropolitan uh, uh, Opera, where they just, you know, they bring back the war horses. Well, is year that, in, is that year necessarily out? a bad thing? I don't know. I mean, we can complain about it, and when it's bad plays, it is annoying. But these, you know, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is a play that you can stand to see. Or, yeah, as I as mean, I thought. No, but Cat and Hutton Roof, we literally had four, four years ago, and also, I think, Nine years ago, we've had this is the third revival in ten years of Cat in the Hot Tin Roof. I, well, I don't know. Never been any good. But this, <laughs> well, it's, so, it's, it's this is a non-traditional version where they're doing it all white. <laughs> <laughs> This is an interesting get because remember they had Ashley Judd who was yeah. really just so nothing could and Jason not Patrick. could not pull off that monologue and now they're having Scarlett Johansson now does she have the chops I don't know I she won the was Tony thinking. Award I hope for so. uh, whatever it was oh, well, all my bridge. all uh, 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 view from the bridge yeah, no, yeah. she, she yeah. was quite good in that yeah. so there's a smaller good. part and a and a, and a a childish part. I, I, I wonder what she'll be able to do with mm -hmm. this one, but I'm game to see. I mean, I, I agree it's becoming a little bit like the Met, but I also agree that that's not necessarily a problem. Yeah, well, it's nice, the good thing about seeing these revivals as often as we do is you get a chance to really see the work and the choices that go into them. It's not just a new play that you're experiencing all at once. I guess what you get to really judge the performances against one another and the directorial choices against one another, and that can be very illuminative. I guess the problem is when, when it begins to feel like the revivals are crowding out the possibility of new works, but that is not what it feels like this year when you have empty, empty theaters. theaters. <laughs> uh, you, there are a few new plays that all look pretty interesting, but uh, it's not like others are trying to get in and have nowhere to go. Right, right. Well, uh, they're, uh, the, one of the only new plays I see here is um, um, uh, Teresa Raybeck's, uh, what's it called, Dead Accounts. Yeah, well, there's the... Teresa, Teresa she, she's prolific. I mean, she's, she cranks out a play a year here. Yeah. Well, she, she's she's going for the Neil Simon Award, I think. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, and, and, Kate, got great. and Katie Holmes had that terrible breakup, and now she comes <laughs> crawling back to Broadway. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and there's always a place for the scandalized people back but there's on also, Broadway. But there's uh, <laughs> David Mamet's new play, The Anarchist. I think uh, with Glenn, Gary Glenn Ross, I think he has some kind of deal where uh, anytime somebody wants to produce a new play of his, they, they have, have to produce, produce, they have to produce a, a revival have, of yeah, an old yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I but, am a little worried that the, I mean, in the Mamet audience, yeah. that, the, that uh, the new play, The Anarchist, will be crowded out. By oh, I don't think so. Not when you have Deborah Winger and Patty Lapone playing. And Patty's a in jail. Prisoner okay. and a warden. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> People are going to line up. Yeah. What, what, the what? lesbian sex scenes alone are going to be. <laughs> it's a play what's based. It, what's the anarchist about? It's loosely based on uh, the case of uh, Judith Clark, the, the woman who, in the Weather Underground, was uh, oh, right, right. an accessory to a murder uh, and uh, has been in jail ever since, still is. Uh, in the play, Lupone plays a character not unlike her, who's been in jail ever since committing such a crime, and who goes before the warden, played by Deborah Winger, oh to God, plead for Mama Morton uh, to show that she has, you know, been rehabilitated and should be uh, given, I guess, parole. Usually, it's Mandy Patinkin who holds Patty captive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know. It sounds, it sounds like a setup for a, a, a great, you know. But Laurie Metcalf, dro Laurie Metcalf dropped out of the Deborah Winger role to do her own. Play which she did on Broadway called The Other Place. Oh, what is that? That she yeah. got all kinds of OBs and things. Yeah, it's a play that she did last season for MCC off Broadway, and she got very good reviews. I think the show itself got kind of mixed reviews. So I'm curious how that's. But gonna it's kind of the Linda Lavin out. thing. Like, let me leave the supporting role. Yeah, but behind that didn't for that didn't work out so well for for that show for the Lions. No, but it's it still worked great. out well for Linda. She got Tony Awards and was celebrated for it. I don't think she got the award. Nominations. Yeah. Yeah, nominations. Oh. The, uh, the Other Place is a fantastic showcase uh, uh, and, and was a very beautifully directed play, whatever you think of the play itself, and I, I think uh, maybe was a smart choice for her. Mm. And finally... Um, for Laurie Metcalf, I mean. Yeah, I think uh, we have to uh, really dissect this one because I love it. Elf? <laughs> I mean, can Broadway get any dumber? I ask you. Can it get any dumber? Bring it on, one of the dumbest, most bring it on is adorbs. musicals I have ever seen. It is seen. adorbs. What's it's adorbs? A, it's a what? <laughs> that's oh, that's youth speak. That's youth speak What's for adorable. We people don't know short, about youth it's speak. Short for adorbs. A, it's adorbs? It's adorbs. It's, this it's, is how you bring write it on is out exactly magazine? what it is it's meant to be. It's balls. It's amaze balls. <laughs> <laughs> but I sat there thinking, four Tony Award winners it took for this? I don't know. To write this. It now, kind of evaporated. It's like glee on steroids. I know, but listen, look at these things. We've got that. We've got the elf coming. We've got a Christmas story. Uh, I actually, I think that the casting in Elf is a little encouraging. And this time they're bringing in more of a Judd Apatow, schlubby character actor type for the lead. Who's that? And, uh, yeah, Gordon and Gilbert from... Um, Avenue. From Avenue Q, oh, and oh. and and Leslie Kritzer is playing the other part, and she's wonderful. She did well, that. Now let's let's show. imagine that Broadway um, is still for adults, or the theater is still for adults. Can you give us before we wrap it up here, uh, each of you, something that you're really looking forward to that's not geared to teenage girls, Michael? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> well, okay. Trick question, There's I know. <laughs> Trick question. There is a play coming called The Performers. Oh, yes. Which is, which is set <laughs> at the Adult Video Awards in Las Vegas. And Cheyenne Jackson plays a porn star, duh. Mm -hmm. And Daniel Breaker is his old friend, and there are women involved. And, and the Fonz, Henry Winkler, is an old Henry porn Winkler star. is yeah. some old man who has a message about <laughs> how important size is or something. But uh, <laughs> the whole thing sounds like it should just be playing the Ramrod Bar. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, I'll be there. <laughs> and it's definitely for adults. It's for adults. All right. Yeah, Jesse, this is there, not for your Annie crap. Jesse, is there anything out there that you're looking forward to? That well, you know, we, we've mentioned a few. I'm, I'm looking forward also to the revival of Golden Boy, the uh, Odette's play, yeah, yeah, uh, directed by play. Bartlett Shear. Uh, but a lot of what I'm looking forward to most is off-Broadway, I'm afraid. Can you give We're us not allowed to Broadway discuss business? that here. But of no, course you, you are. Uh, well, there's a, a new Terrence McNally play. There's a, 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 the third play in the sequence by Amy Herzog called The Great God Pan. We've uh, heard... Previous two plays were terrific. Uh, there's the new Christopher Durang play at Lincoln Center Theater. There's a, a lot of, and Detroit, was, which was, is on Broadway, recently opened and is very good. Right, right. Uh, which is off-Broadway. No. I wonder if Oh, off-Broadway, right, yeah. at, at Playwrights. Uh, and Adam, you or something? Well, no, I agree with Jesse. Uh, I mean, I'm, I am really looking forward to seeing the new Virginia Woolf, but I, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing which of these off-Broadway plays my, manages to transfer because I mean yeah. we are being depressive about the fall season but let's remember that it is the fall season and in recent years at least the new model is that things transfer yeah. when they're successful from off-Broadway to Broadway in the spring in time for the Tony cutoff and I think that we may if we're lucky see some of these shows 
in the current Broadway season just a little bit later in the calendar. So I'm looking forward to some of those, to the Lacusa, to the Tesori, to the Durang, and to a bunch of others. Okay. Now I want to say that Jim Norton is playing in Edmund Root. Oh right, Jim Norton is playing, oh, uh, who's right. a wonderful actor. Oh, well, that's good, that's good cast. But I tell you, the most exciting theatrical event of this season is the ongoing scandal of Rebecca. It's not gonna end. It's better and than the actual show of Rebecca. It's better than the actual <laughs> show. It's better than most of these shows here. So, all right. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for your insights. Michael Musto from The Village Voice. Adam Feldman from Time Out. Jesse the Rottweiler <laughs> Wacker Green of New York Magazine immortalized in Arthur Lawrence's new and book. And the ghost of Arthur The Lawrence, rest of yeah. the story by Arthur Lawrence. All right, and a moment you. of silence for Paul Abrams, please. Just <laughs> a moment of silence. That's right. <laughs> Broadway's lost a... Very important force. Damn you, malaria. the lights for Paul Abrams, the phantom investor of Rebecca. All right, gentlemen, and uh, Haskins, thanks a lot for being our guest tonight on Theater Take your quinine, kids. <laughs> <laughs> quinine all around up. <laughs> Malaria's breaking Who needs another world. revival of Virginia Woolf? We, just, we can just sit here and watch you do it. We are the You can sign up for viewer updates at theatertalk.org. Or you can follow us on Twitter. Our thanks to the Friends of Theater Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Eleanor Naylor Dana Charitable Trust, the Alan S. Gordon Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you and good night. <laughs>